So the first thing I do is I want to just select the fairy here. And it doesn't really matter what color I use. I just want something that will stand out. This is sort of the laborious part of this part here. dog just knocked over something. Or it was a cat that knocked over something. My dog is right next to me. One thing I like to do is turn the canvas because my wrists don't work certain ways. And this is just a piece that I did for my own practice purposes. Um, I was watching a video by Steven Zapata, uh, which actually Proko put up. And Steven Zapata was using, does a lot of pencil work. I mean, does just phenomenal, beautiful pencil stuff and very fantastical kind of call Cthulhu like critters and stuff like that. But this, this video was on making shapes and how to shade them and stuff like that and using pencil to do that. And I, um, and he used a lot of uh, shading nubs. Um, and I haven't used a shading, shading nub since art school. And so I wanted to try it out. So I did this drawing on on um, marker paper, which which was really nice. I kind of I kind of liked it. I mean, it's a little thin. I would have preferred like a nice, you know, uh, Bristol or something like that. But I was I it was a new marker paper, and I wanted to mess around with with my new art supplies. I like to play with with lots of different things. Lots of different supplies, trying everything out just to get used to it. That's fun for me. So we're starting to get this outline down. So, um, yeah, anyway, so I ordered some nubs from Amazon. And they came, and I started to do this. So I sort of used the blending nub tool in a lot of areas. And... That was fun. I hadn't done that in a really long time, literally since art school, and that was many, many years ago. Okay, so I think we've got the form. Oops, no, we don't. We have this whole arm we have to do. Um, sometimes when I do this, it's it's really easy to just miss a pixel here or there, and then you're not able to select it cleanly and I'll show you what I mean in a minute here when I get this done mm -mm. Well, let's see if this stays encapsulated nope there's a double line and that's because Still double line. Okay, so somewhere there's a space. So one of the tricks I do is I create a layer, 
and I just put a piece of white just fill it all in with white behind it and then that allows me to go and find where there might be a gap mm -mm -mm. and there it is grab the color <laughs> see if there's another one up in our wing section I think that's pretty good oops so I drew that on the wrong layer <laughs> layer discipline is important Okay, let's try this again. Nope, I still am getting there's a gap somewhere. Where is this gap? Maybe it's this one here. Oops. Maybe that doesn't look like a gap, but and I have I have my fill tool. It's supposed to um, allow for a couple of pixels of space. Oh, there it is. There's the big one. Yeah, that's too big. All right, now it should work. Okay, you see how the marching ants are on the outside? That's where I want them to be. And then I'll select all the negative space. Go to sneeze. <laughs> Pardon me. And then what I do is I invert the selection. I hide the white. I copy the selection and then I paste. So now I can hide this. In fact, I can just get rid of it. Actually, I'll keep it just in case I ever want to select this whole selection again. So now what I can do is I can color behind behind her. In fact, I think I'll put down a ground. Do, do, do. Something. Uh, let's see here. Set to multiply. And now you see she is on her own layer. So um, I also want to darken her up. Um... And then I'll go in and I'll work in some lights first. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a tone, basically across all of her, and then leave that there. I'm gonna tr see. I don't usually use this, but I'm gonna try to remove dust and see what that does. Didn't really notice much effect. Um, don't really notice much effect again. All right, well, that's fine. So get rid of that that line, and I'll do the same thing for the cat. I'll eventually pull the cat out and and do that, but I just wanted to. I'm going to take the saturation way down for the background there. So now I can lock the pixels. So only where there's pixels actually drawn. So this area here is all transparent and the rest of it is, is locked. And what I want to do is go in with some highlights using a soft pencil. You know, I know she's not Caucasian, but I wanted to just hit a couple of the areas where I would feel like some light is. So one of the nice things about this is like I can I can paint right up to the edge. I can paint in here, but it's not going to do anything because I have that locked. So 
so. And then what I can do is I can do a little soft blend. Don't like that spot there. And so now I'm using a digital blend tool. Um, let's see here. Go ahead. Oops, that's not the tool I wanted. My dog's whining. My dog wants it. My dog wants attention. What else is new? I gave him one already. My wife is giving the dog a... Yeah, I did. Giving the dog a bone. I'm just building up some lights here slowly. You know, one thing I can do is I don't really want a sharp line here, so I can I can turn off my um, and just so we get a soft line there on these wings. So now, let's start thinking about her skin tones here. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to set it to multiply. And I'm going to go and create a selection from the original fairy layer. And then bring it up here. And I'm going to hide this selection just because I hate it. If you go to uh, check off selection, or it hides it. It's still there. Or it hides it. It's still there. But that allows me to then paint quickly like with skin tones right so that's a little dark and i just am just am gonna put in a, a flat color and this is why i did the highlights because they'll come back again i'm just gonna paint that earring differently differently close my door because my wife's watching television she's home today I'm hoping you guys aren't hearing that this is my first stream so I've never done this before I've been doing some YouTube videos of doing artwork and stuff like that but I just I just want to suggest some of the color in here I 
one nice thing is let's see you got some of this down and it's encapsulated because as this oil brush is set at um I'm a little automatic stared by Clip Studio. Um, by the way, I'm the program I'm using is Clip Studio Art. It's my favorite art program. I like it better than Photoshop. I've tried some of the others, but this is the one whose brushes I like the most. most. And um, it does pretty much everything that Photoshop does. There's like one um, like editing thing that I can't do in Clip Studio that I can do in Photoshop that I prefer, but that's that's it. And and Clip Studio is often on sale. It's real reasonable. I think I spent fifty bucks the first time I bought it and that wasn't for the pro version. Then I ended up getting the pro version and it was like, I don't know, eighty dollars, seventy dollars, something like that. It was it was incredibly well um yeah, it was, it was, so, you know, like these highlights are coming in a little bit orange, so I'm, I'm not incredibly happy about that, but that's okay. I'm going to go over it again. So what I do now is I merge the two layers. And actually, I think I'm going to leave that off. And now I can kind of go in there and really start to do some highlights. And I want a different tool. We're going to go to soft pencil again. You know, and I want some pretty subtle, subtle things happening here. Like, you know, like if I'm going to go into the eyes. quiet because I'm just concentrating a bit here and so right here there's a bit of some light hitting this is pretty subtle stuff These brights that I'm putting in here are too bright. Um, I am not going to leave them. They're too they're too sharp. But I wanted to sort of delineate them to make stuff pop, stuff pop. I was going to use a swear word. 
but I didn't. Okay, I want to give her elf ears. We're gonna extend these ears up a little bit. So I said I was going to make this pop right. So one of the things I can do is I can come back and I can just blend them a little bit. And that's going to soften them up a little and make them sit on the form the way I want them to. Because it's a woman, I want... I don't want sharp lines on her face. Um, trying to keep it all about the curves. So I'm going to be blending in a lot of the forms. I don't like this. Um, oops, my erase tool. Erase tool's too big. That shape there. Take that out. We can come back in with a. Oops, I've got this. Um, I'm going to drop the selection. What the hell? What? Not. Oh, it is. There we go. Speck of green in those in those eyes. There. They don't look like they're looking at the cat. And I want them to look at the cat. So. Where the eyes are looking are so freaking important. And just a couple of... Millimeters, millimeters of difference make a huge difference. Sometimes you just got to blow out the whole thing and start over. That's better.
And there we have the face. It's, it's getting pretty good. I might go into that eye a little bit later and a little bit later and, and clean up that one white spot. But for now, I'm going to see how it feels with the, the hair coming in, coming in. So again, I'm going to go make another layer, set it to multiply. What multiply means is that whatever is beneath the layer will continue to shine through and it is added to whatever color that you're putting on top. So, um, and I use this oil, oil paint brush, which is set at 100% opacity. So I'm taking my hands off and we're going to, and by, by taking my hands off, this is what I mean. So I can, oops, cancel. Um, Got to make a selection first. Want to hide the selection. So what I mean by picking my hand up and putting it back down is like, I can do that, right? And if you're using a multiply brush, it will add it to the same brush. But because I'm just doing it on a multiply layer, it is the same color. And I can just, this way I can put in her hair very quickly. And we'll just fill that section in there. There. And then I can, well, I might as well, yeah, I'll might do some other bits and bobs here. So I'm going to do her, whatever this weird, weird bracer thing that I decided to do here at the last minute. And, um, Gonna make her wings kind of greenish purple, like purple with greenish uh, bits in it, I think. So, gonna make that super light. Mm, not happy with that. Let's go pink. Uh, hmm. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? I might do that separately. Okay, so I'm going to do her her robes here, and what color should I think? You know, um, African American skin always looks so good with yellows and greens. I think I'm going to go green. And if that is racist, I apologize. Um, I had the opportunity to have a lot of my live models in art school be people of color and I love dealing with other skin tones besides um, you know the Caucasian guy that I look at in the mirror um, and and because of that doing skin tones all these different skin tones it's really difficult for me um, uh, you know, I see myself in the mirror all the time. I I know what a Caucasian skin tone is. I know sort of the, you know, there's sort of reds and pinks and blues, you know, like where I, uh, my five o'clock shadow is and stuff like that. And that is, um, that's really well known to me doing people of color you know my wife's puerto rican she has a very olive skin which i love and and stuff like that and and boy her skin tone is so hard to do though um because i don't know i mean in the um doing live models of of african americans i notice a lot of purples and greens in their skin and stuff like that in, in certain areas and, and it was just it was always just really exciting for me and a challenge, and I think it's exciting because it is a challenge to, to do that. So um, I hope I'm not offending anybody. If I am, I apologize. And if there's a better way I can talk about doing um, different, uh, you know, skin tones for people, a gentler way, perhaps, let me know. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be a jerk about this stuff. I, I. But I do think that it's important to talk about the differences between skin colors because, you know, if I lay out a palette and I'm painting traditionally, what I'm laying out for for you know a redheaded 
Irish girl with, you know, the palest and palest of skins, it's going to be very different than the palette that I lay out for, you know, a Nubian uh, princess uh, or queen or something like that. And, and, you know, I mean, I think, I think everyone should be represented and, and we should have lots and lots of different ideas of what beauty is. Um, so yeah, I think it's really, really important and to have these conversations, but I also think it's really important to have these conversations in a respectful and constructive manner. I don't, I don't want to be, um, yeah, a jerk. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do another layer again. And, but this time, instead of setting to multiply, I'm going to sell it, set it to color. And the reason is I want, I want the wings to be really, see, that's really too pink. Maybe I'll set it to overlay. What's overlay look like? Okay. Overlay's even brighter, but that's okay. I can, I can, I can knock it down, but I'm not sold on this pink color as my, that's not bad. Hmm. You know what? I think we're going to go back to the greens. Let's go back to, yeah, there we go. Just laying this color in very fast. And then where the two wings kind of overlap, I think I want it to be a little darker. So we're going to... Make it a little darker. That might be too dark, so we can lighten that up a little bit. Yeah, that's a little more subtle. Let's bring out the old blend, blend tool. Make the okay. and then you know that's awfully bright on the page. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the opacity down a little bit, and I'm going to all merge the two. And I can start to play with blending more. Um, this is where I can start to work in some of these purples. And drop the selection layer with a key um, key binded. So. And so I've got to think about how I want to blend this to the, sh to the shoulder blade. Mm.
getting too involved into little minute details. I don't know how I want this. How I want this connection to happen. I'm not sure. Connection to happen. I'm not sure. Sort of thinking like how how do the muscles in the back support this? Because they don't exist in real life. So how can we fake it till we make it? <laughs> uh, it's not easy. My brain is hurting. I want a little ridge. So I'm, this is supposed to be the scapula. I don't like the line that is right here. Let's get rid of that. There's just two. And um, you know, Bernie Fuchs and Howard Pyle would, oops, that's right, I don't mind that little, would do a lot of what they call combining shapes, like the shapes. So, like, here's the shape of her, her um, uh, back, and then the arm is behind it, and I'm just kind of letting these blur into each other because they're in the background. I don't care if it's super accurate or not. I want it to sit in the background. Getting in some of these. Just wherever I feel like that kind of darkness should be happening is where I want to put that. You know, and the nice thing about these these oil brushes um, that I have from Clip Studio that I downloaded from somewhere, I can't remember where, um, is they are pressure sensitive. So 
uh, the harder I press, the more paint I put down, the more, you know, the darker the color and stuff like that. So if I'm very light, I can, I can kind of sc scumble and build up. I'm not a very bold, um, it's not like I just mix the paint and slap it down and, and I'm, I'm good to go. I tend to be a lot more cautious and kind of build up my forms over time. You know, I see some pencil line in there. Uh, you know, now we're starting to work in some yellow, yellow wear, orangier colors that are just so beautiful, I think. You know, her breast is pretty hidden. Boy, I hate that little spot right here. So. Open that out. One time, one thing I can do is um, I like to use the the color picker a lot to kind of keep getting to the sort. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Um, so by holding the Alt key down while I have I have a brush selected, it brings up the the eye picker tool, and I can go in there and I can I can grab a color. Let's get some, some purples in there. This is a little dark now. So if I hit it with a little bit of And then I think we need this line just to suggest that is coming out. And we can grab a little green here from the a little bounced bounce light on that. Digging it. It's coming along. I think that's where I'm going to stop for today and get on to doing some other things. So I'm going to save it. I, well, I haven't saved yet. That's bad. So all my work that uh, is in the process of happening, I call INP or NP in progress. So I just save it as in progress there. And I will catch you guys next time. Hi, and I'm back to try to finish off this fairy here. So I think I've been need, I need to work on her lower half and the clothing and, of course, the cat. Her spine here in a little couple of spaces. So, uh, yeah, let's let's get into it.
So yeah, I'm just trying to work some blues into the spine here. Those little nubbins. Uh, but I don't want them to be super blue, so we're going to try a little bit of blending. go mm -mm -mm. I'm just using my blending tool I think because I'm blending that pencil that that color gets to be a very um, dull color so we'll, we'll come on top of it with a little bit of red and I think that's a lot nicer and a little s more subtle could even could even grab a little bit of that purple that I have in her arm there and just put a little touch of it just to yeah I like these purples. <laughs> and I think I want a little bit of a You know, there should be a little bit of a line here, because there's actually, you know, a crevice in the butt, between the two butt cheeks. So, we got to get that. So when I'm kind of scumbling or, or glazing like this, I am... Oh, hello, cat and dog. The dog is cat chasing the cat, so of course. Um, I'm doing it very lightly, because the, the, the stylus is, is set to, um, to pressure sensitive, right? So, um, yeah, I want it to... And so I'm constantly going between the size of the stylus, the, the pen tool, and um, the color that I'm using. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm letting, I'm literally, I went to a green, I went to an orange, I went to a brown, and, um, you know, that's, that's okay. That's what needs to get done for me. I mean, I think there's other artists who can sort of mix to what they want, like much, much better. I got to move this up a little bit. And I think I want to change because I this line needs to come up a little bit further. It's a little bit. Um.
You know, and I got to be a little careful with the highlights because if I put too much in, she's going to read, she's going to read Caucasian. Like it's really, it's even as dark as she is. And, and as you know, if I go a little too pink, um, and I start building up the tones with some pinks and some reds. She can read Caucasian super easy, like just like she's a really dark tanned uh, Caucasian. So it's I have to be really judicious. I feel, um, you know, like I said, I don't have tremendous experience doing African American um, people, and certainly not from from memory. Um, but I've done it enough. I've done a, you know, uh, you know, I shouldn't say, uh, no experience. I have, I have quite a bit of experience. Like I said, I had, you know, models in art school who were African American. I have, uh, I've really made it, uh, my, um, job to try to be more inclusive in my art and that's not just african americans but that's middle eastern that's you know latino um you know latinos can ooh, they run the gamut man um you know my wife is a puerto rican she has this really gorgeous sort of cocoa butter olive skin and um and yet she she looks almost white I mean, her, her hair color, she's not very dark. I mean, her eyes are, you know, really brown, beautiful brown eyes, big brown eyes. And, um, but she is constantly being um, thought of as Caucasian, um, as white. And, um, you know, and she's a twin and her sister too. And other sisters in the family, um, She's had several. Uh, definitely look a little bit more uh, Latino. Like, like they, they just have those Latino features. Um, her her mom certainly was very Latino looking. Um, her dad is extreme. You know, looks just like a you know very handsome muy guapa. Um, I mean, mean muy guapo. He's not a. I gotta use the, the feminine. I mean, the male. Uh, ad, um, so he's very. He's a very handsome man, and you know, but he's he's got that sort of classic mustache, and um, he's kind of a big guy, and and uh, yeah, he's he's a good looking dude. Um, it's just interesting that that Millie, my 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 wife, Milagros. And Rosie, her twin, are both very fair for, but they, but their, but their skin tone is is not Caucasian. It just can in the summertime they get dark and it then kind of reads Caucasian. So, you know, I'm not trying to be racist here or anything like that, but I am trying to sort of say, hey, this stuff is difficult. You know, you're we're doing dealing with some some uh you know just logistics just just on on the surface of you know uh wanting to be accurate and wanting to you know i'm an illustrator i'm not i'm not a fine artist so i don't i don't have the luxury of just saying what i put up on the canvas is what i put up on the canvas you know um you know i think i think fine artists i know fine artists have their own tribulations i'm not trying to downgrade what fine artists go through at all because i know it's it's a it's a difficult life and there's struggles of a different kind for sure but i have a story to tell 
I, I have to serve. That's what an illustrator does. He illuminates or she illuminates the story. And um, so I have a master that the fine artist doesn't. The fine artist has a master to themselves. They are the master. I, I don't have that, that opportunity. Um, nor do I want it, to be honest. Um, I, I like the, the uh, challenge of, of like, hey, I have to do an African-American fairy. And that, that, to me, is a lot of fun. So I like that challenge. I, and, and I want to have these conversations um, because I think, I think that's, you know, I think it's important. I think it's, it's important. I think it's important to be accurate with our drawings to the extent that we can be, you know, and, and, um, what am I trying to say here? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me out. I just want to darken up behind the... We are blending. We are blending. And click that because I want to... Let's get a nice little blue or purple highlight here on the the top of the calf. I'm still there. We go. Sorry, when you lean in, you don't see my face anymore. But that's probably a good thing. Um. You know, her her leg is twisting in space here, which is so we're gonna see that that demarcation of the calf between the two halves of the calf. Even though the the um, oh here's the dog again. Uh, even though the the heel of the foot, I mean yeah, the heel um, is in shadow. It's going to it's it's a lighter pigmentation, and so then I have to balance. You know how light is it? Because it is lighter, and I just kind of want to hint at these toes. I don't really want to get into delineating every single toe, and um, and how much of it is is like cast shadow. So I have to I have to figure out where that balance is, and that's you know that takes some thought. I have to use my noggin. I gotta think about it. All right. And I want I want that back foot to just really kind of like disappear and just barely be there. Right. But the da. I'm sort of extending the the what is called like the core shadow up a little bit, and I'll blend it in. Little, oops, I had to, my game on uh, not my game, <laughs> my program automatically saved, which is a great thing, in case there's some kind of accident issue. All right, so I think I I need to blur. I need to blur this back here on top of her 
Um, just because I don't like it being as sketchy. It's kind of interesting. I like I like the uh, the texture underneath her. I don't mind it there, but I'm not loving it here. I think I just sort of I half-assed scrabbled that in, and and I wasn't super happy about it. Same with same with this area in here. I'm just gonna. I think I was just sort of denoting to myself. Hey, I want these these things to be lighter. And yep. And now I think the leg can get hit with a bit of a highlight. I like that color there. I'm just gonna reuse it. Uh yeah, that's no what's going on. I would like that to be a little brighter, so I'm gonna crank it up a little bit. I'm on the wrong layer. Do -do -do -do. There we go. And I think it's kitty cat time. All right, so I have to think about how I want to do the wings. Speaking of my model, here they are. Here's my model, Eli the Flying Kitty. Yes, Eli, I don't want you up here. Goodbye. Love you. See you later. Go do kitty things. Actually, before I get into the cat, this... This area with the uh, the sort of this weird bracelet thing really needs to be cleaned up. And can we not run into my studio and drive me crazy, guys? That would be great. So one of the things we can do. Kind of working in some darker tans to make this gold or brass or whatever it is read right. Um, I can even go a little more red. You know, it's gonna it's gonna pick up a lot of her skin tone. Uh, And then I can really punch up some highlights. I think I'll even You know, I've got some pencil strokes in there and the skin tones. I don't when you when you zoom out, I, I kind of like them, so I'm just going to leave them. I'm not going to I'm not going to beat myself up about trying to clean that up. Um, I'm bringing a little bit of that purple into into the finger here. Um, <laughs> I think I want a little more red tones. And then some of these sort of nice um, yellows. 
left hands. I like that red. I want to bring it from here a little bit. And there we go. I think I'm okay with that. I think I want to just clean up this piece here a little bit. You're, you know, erasing. <laughs> here comes Eli again. Hello, Eli. Do you want me to do you? Hello, say hi to. Uh, I say hi to the folks. No, let me down. I don't want to be. I don't want to be petted. But I want to be petted. That's my cat voice. My wife loves that. My cat voice. My wife is a very generous woman for putting up with my shenanigans. <laughs> Uh, okay. Still have something in my eye. Good morning sleep. Clear that out. Let's get to doing some kitty love. Okay, I'm going to do the kitty on its own layer. Um, and I think I just want to use a blue... Do, do, do. Guys, can you go do that somewhere else? Okay, and let's see if I've got the cat on its own. Is he completely surrounded? Nope, I see a spot where he's not. All right, I just noticed that after. Oops, let's go back to the pencil tool. Now he should be, I think, encapsulated. Nope, I've got a spot somewhere, so... Where's my opening? Oh, it's here. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do this. Still, I have an opening. Where's my opening? Oh, I have... It selected to uh, grab all uh, M M M pixels, so, but I still don't have it correct. Mm, hunt, hunt the pixel spot. Wow, this is really pathetic on my part. Okay, the tail, that looks complete. That's a single line. Single line, single line, do, do, do. What's, oh, thought I had my, do it there, do it there. Okay, where are you? 
still I don't know There we go. Marking, marching ants are on the outside. So what I do is I invert the selection. I go down to this. I grab it. I bring it up. Paste it in. And then um, I can get rid of the line, that obnoxious blue line. And then what I can also do is create another new layer. This is going to be set to multiply. Or, you know what, never mind. I don't want to do that. I can just darken him up. Uh, actually, what I want to do first is I'm going to use brightness contrast because I want to. There we go, get a little darker, and then a little correction. Darken the whole thing up. Okay, and then we've got we've got the basis of a kitty. And we can lock the layer down. Then I can go back to the original pencil and I can blend this a little bit behind him. So it doesn't it doesn't read so streaky. I mean, I I'm trying to imply that that he's in motion and there's you know he's only got two wings, but there's sort of after images because his wings are moving so fast to keep that keep that kitty up in the air. Um, yeah, and then so so a couple of the wings are going to be more substantial than the others, and the others are going to be sort of less substantial. Um, I can sort of show you what I mean, but first of all, let me keep cleaning this up. So he's a pretty black, pretty black cat. So I'm going to come on top of him. Um, I don't use this tool, my felt pen, a whole lot because it's super dark. But I think in this case, I am going to. So is that too dark? It's pretty dark. Let's let's back it off a little bit. I can always I can always there we go. I can always punch it up. I can always punch the shadows up a little bit more in the darkest areas. So the disadvantage of using um, the felt tool, the felt marker, is if I lift it up and put it back down again, it will multiply on whatever brush stroke that I put near it. So you'll you'll get super super dark uh, with the with the tone that I'm using. And I think I'm gonna just hit at the body back here. Okay, and then I can I can come back and draw over that. So there's our there's our kitty. There's our kitty. Yay kitty. Yay Eli flying cat. Okay. Ooh, that's way too dark. All right, so I got to do that with. Oh, I didn't know I could do. So 
So let's see here. I think I want a soft pencil tool to do. His whiskers and stuff. Why, why, cat? Why are you bothering me? Do you know that you're being drawn? Is that why you're... coming to visit? What are you chewing on? I might have to take a break here, guys, and address address some issues I'm having with my animals. Not making my life easy at the moment. Oh. Okay. Okay, so I think I want the wings to be a different color than my African-American fairy. So I think I'm going to keep them blue, like like sort of the white paws and stuff like that. So I think I want the top wing to be the most substantial. Hey, come on, guys. Really. Eddie the dog just so wants to play with with uh with a Eli there. Okay, and then I think I can go and make these a little less substantial. Both in tone and in detail, I will just kinda ghost them in. Okay. And then we'll even back it down a little bit more. We can come back and pick these guys up a little bit, make them a little lighter.
you know, the other thing I can do is I can blur them a little. <laughs> okay, and then I think we'll come back to the top wing. Uh, whoops, I wanted to get it a little bit shifting towards the green. And we'll put some detail into this wing that um, the others below it don't have and that way it sort of reads as hopefully it reads as the one that's um, the most uh, substantial you know And then we can kind of hint and just maybe doing a little bit of that. You know, and if it, if it reads as, as <laughs> he's got six wings like a dragonfly, I can live with that. I can live with that. Um, I'm, I'm all right with that. I think I want to do a layer beneath him and do some kind of... Some maybe some strokes. Mm. Very s trying to keep it very subtle. So it reads his motion, but doesn't distract or read as a shape, you know, like a like a physical object. Um, so yeah, I think I think we're gonna call this one almost complete. Um, I just want to get some maybe some purple tones into the blank. Oh wow, that's not the brush that I thought I had. <laughs> there we go. I wanted the oil brush, not the felt brush. Just a little bit of... Because green is a contrast color, and purple is its contrast. I mean, all colors have contrast. I shouldn't say uh, green is its contrast color, but just that if there's some purples in the, in the green, uh, in the shadow side, um, I think that makes the shadow side kind of juicy, juicy and, and and sits in space kind of a nice in a nice way. Um, 
I think I'm gonna use my multiply water crawler brush. Ooh, I did that on its own layer. I shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. We're at the end of the drawing. I'm not completely. I want to darken this up even more. That little nubbin so it sits behind that shape there. Yeah. I think I think that does it. If you like this kind of stuff, please uh, you know subscribe and like. And I hope you had a great day. And stay tuned for a new one soon. And thank you very much for watching. And um, have a great day. Thanks.